Out here with the birds this morning. This is a 40 foot gooseneck. And we are building the biggest honking tiny house I have ever seen. All right, so got some of the uh, foundation joists uh, across here attached. Um, I'm just gonna go over a little bit of what I'm doing. So, as you can see, the edge of the trailer is right here. It's 102 inches from each of the side strap bars to each bar. What I'm gonna be doing is underneath, I'm going to be welding on right there onto this quarter inch or whatever that is. It might be a little bit more than quarter inch um, iron, but uh, I'm gonna be welding on a three by three um, bracket onto here. Um, yeah, so that is the plan. So it'll come out to about right here, well, actually about right there. And then I'll have one and a half, or two inch overhang. Um, yeah, so that's the plan on every joist all the way down. So that's 62 um, pieces of angle iron that I'm going to be sticking on there. Um, so anyways, yeah, so it'll have a two inch overhang past the angle iron. Um, so the wall itself is going to be three and a half inches or, you know, a standard two by four on there. So it'll be overhanging by um, three and a half to, yeah, so one and one and a half inches it'll be on on the uh, on the angle iron, um, putting the weight down. But yeah, so anyways, um, all, I've already cut all of these to 108 and 7 eighths and got them laid on there. And then I'm just pre-drilling, well, not really pre-drilling, I'm just sticking all my screws in over here on this table before I stick them up. So I've already uh, marked off on all of the two by fours where my studs go. And uh, yeah, and then I'm just digging all my screws and just put them down, two on each one. So yep, that's what's going down right now. All right, so you might already be wondering what in the world you're hanging over the edge. Probably not a good idea to do that. Um, rule of thumb, if you're gonna cantilever a floor like this, is you do not wanna exceed the width of the board as far as your distance from the supported edge. So on a two by four, three and a half inches, you would not want to stick your edge over whatever your actual support beam is by three and a half inches, no more. Um, I'm even scared to put it three and a half inches over the edge. I would still think that'd be too much weight um, bearing down on it and it would eventually bow. And I'm gonna be welding on a three by three angle iron piece to each joist, underneath each joist. My camera seems to be having some difficulties. So it's not going to be sticking over, um, but two inches overhang on each side. So like I said, max you can do is three and a half inches. I feel safe with doing two inches because I'm not just putting down a two by four foundation and building on top of it. I am putting down one and one eighth inch Advantech OSB, the super floor. You could probably build your house strictly out of that stuff with no two by fours and it would stand. Um, the stuff weighs 125, 128 pounds per sheet. Um, it's gonna be amazing. But yeah, so standard flooring is three quarter inch or 23, 30 seconds. It's about like that. Advantech is like that. I mean, it's a super thick, super strong. I, I could have probably just put the Advantech flooring directly down on top of the uh, metal going across and it probably would have been pretty firm. <laughs> but uh, it's much better to over engineer than under engineer. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that uh, there won't be any problem with doing a two by four foundation like this, having a two inch cantilevered overhang um, and then putting my one and one eighth inch Advantech on top of that. It's gonna be really amazing. You guys will have to wait and see how it turns out.
taking uh, three inch by three inch by three sixteenth inch um, angle iron and I'm cutting it up into 62 chunks to put under all of my joists that are going to be sticking over the edge of the trailer. So you see I've got to cut got to cut on this side first and then we'll flip it over and match all the cuts on that side. So very labor intensive have the, uh, have the uh, metal suppliers a lot of times do the cuts for you but it, it's like a dollar a cut so if you have a chop saw buy a couple of blades because you're going to burn through them. Alright so I am drilling through 3 sixteenths angle iron. This stuff tried to get you up high enough so you can see the drilling process. So I'm using uh, titanium coated drill bits um, from DeWalt. Just so you know, I think a 21 piece set of them all the way up to half inch is like 25 bucks. Um, I've already drilled through 30, 30 pieces um, and I'm not using a pilot about it all. But with titanium bits, you want to keep them from getting too hot. Because once the coating is gone, um, I'm not going to drill very well. So I've got my little rig here set up. I'm just spraying it. Pushing down, rotating pressure on it. When you see the bit start to steam, or you see the metal start to steam that you're drilling into, you know that it's starting to get kind of hot. I'm just using water. I've got a little plastic drop fan lid underneath me. But yeah, just push, spray, push, spray, push, spray. Like I said, I've already drilled through 30 of these, and uh, the bit is still going strong. The uh, cobalt and the black oxide can handle higher heat the titanium, but if you're using a drill press, drill press especially, um, you don't need to worry about high speed so much as um, just keeping the big pool, because it's any kind of friction, no matter how fast you're going, it's going to eat away at the uh, coating. But all the bits, they all benefit from using some sort of dip again. Water is the easiest. It causes rust, but there's no mess, and I can just fill up my little spray bottle like this. And have a little automatic feeding system going. So if you've got the lubricant spray, I find this to be pretty quick and uh, cheap. down there have already been drilled. It's dry now. Now you can get one of these things at any kind of home improvement store. Probably at Walmart too. Out here with the birds this morning and welding onto the side of the trailer the supports so that I can go over the edge. So you can see my 3 by 3 by 3 16 inch angle iron. Um, I have never welded before in my life. I'm actually MIG welding right now. Um, as my uh, my lovely uh, welds can show you, I haven't removed the slag, but they're still pretty rough. So anyways, getting the hang of welding. Um, MIG welding is way easier than stick welding. At least that's what they say. Um, I might try some stick welding as well. But anyway, so I'm just going around just grinding off the paint with my handy dandy grinder. And then I am <clears throat> coming back and basically putting these on the bottom here where I've gotten rid of the paint and just centering them. And then I am holding them in place with a little metal clamp and then soldering on one side 
or welding, sorry, on one side. And then I just keep on doing that all the way down. Once I finish getting them all aligned, then I lift up the deck so I can weld on the top and on the bottom, or on the side. So, just welding all the way around. And you can see back here, I've already done it on these. So yeah, so I'll be doing that on both sides. So you can see they're all set up and ready to go. So here's the trailer with all the, uh, the brackets welded on all the way down. And it's all been bolted up. I haven't cleaned off any of the slag or anything. Not until I paint. Come on camera, there you go. And then I have one of these uh, coated lag screws. They're not galvanized um, and they're not lag screws either. They're zip screws or something like that. Anyways, <clears throat> they're about three and five eighths inches long. So they go fully up into the two by four. Um, but yeah, so anyways, the deck is adhered down on all sides. And down here at the end, I've uh, still got my clamp. Um, down here on the end, I had to weld on this little two and a half inch square angle iron to extend it out so that I could support this corner better. That's just a little spacer piece there. Um, so yeah, so the corner is completely supported on both sides. Um, but yeah, so now what I have to do is I have to go now and make sure that all of my joists are all 16 inches on center all the way down. I mean, I've obviously done that on the outside, but now I need to go into the middle and screw them into all the uh, 2x4 runners and uh, make sure that they stay 16 inches on center so when I'm putting down my subfloor, um, there's no um, misplacement of the joints. So, yeah. Lots of screws. And I am doing this all with screws. Since I'm going into uh, ACQ lumber, or treated lumber, I figured I might as well use um, deck screws. But also I, I wanted more pulling power um, than even uh, a ring shank nails would give. So it takes a little bit longer, but if I make a mistake, it's easy. I just unscrew it chop a little bit off, replace it, whatever. It's been uh, much better to use screws in this. <laughs> 